Musta kayo lahat? Ah, grabe init na yon na. Dito ako sa labas ng bahay. Grabe init init talaga. Curious ako talaga sa video ito. I keep seeing this on my YouTube feed and it's called the 10 biggest lies being told about the Philippines. Ano yon? Grabe man, lies being told around the world. I'm guessing that it's probably just misconceptions. So let's have a look and see what's really going on. The Philippines is a country that we love to talk about here on FTD Facts. Okay. So much can be said about the beauty of the country as yeah. well as the beauty of the people. Yet even still, there are many stereotypes, misconceptions, and straight up lies that have been put on as labels on the country and its people. Welcome back to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton. And for this episode, I'm gonna be looking at 10 of the biggest lies, stereotypes, and misconceptions about the Philippines. Okay, oh. so let's get into this list. Oh, sabi ko sa'yo, di ba? It's not actually lies. These are more misconceptions about the Philippines. So let's hear, what are the 10 misconceptions about the Philippines? At number 10, Filipino women are submissive huh? and quiet. Really? Like every other country though, <laughs> women come in a variety of attitudes. Some a little bit more uh. attitude prone than others. But either way, Filipinas are just a conservative type of woman. According to sources, yeah. Filipino women, they find it uncomfortable to mingle or even interact with male foreigners and really? even their own men. They also have really? a reputation of being quiet and shy, but this okay. is normally because that they feel that they don't have the adequate skill of speaking English to the foreigners. Huh? So instead of speaking nonsense, they remain silent. The next Wait, what? Do you guys agree with this? Because I don't really agree with this. Yes, uh, a lot of women, of course, are maybe a little bit quiet because that's how uh, Filipinos grow up. They're about to be very respectful, especially when you come from the province. Of course, Pag Daga Manila, you are more open. And I think it's like that in every country in the world. Kaitsa Denmark, if you come from the province, you're more silent type, more quiet type. And mas mapait, no? Sabi nila. So what do you guys think? Is this the real way that women in the Philippines are because they're shy of not speaking English to foreigners or even interact with the male um, Filipinos? I don't think so. I think Filipino women are very empowered. I think they're very strong. Babae lahat ng women and business people dito sa Philippines. Yun maliit ng negosyo, babae, di ba? Size size stores, babae, medium size companies, babae, lahat ng supervisors, managers, lahat, di ba? I think so far empowered talaga yun babae dito. The next lie is that the Philippines is one land mass. This is something that I've been guilty of thinking myself. Really? But there's actually over 7,000 islands that make up the Philippines, yep. and around 2,000 of them are inhabited and this is known as an archipelago okay. which is a collection of islands or sometimes a sea containing a small number of scattered islands right i think everybody knows this how would anybody think that the philippines does not consist of islands i think this is something everybody learns in school all over the world so i don't get that but that might be a misconception in some part of the world. Now, the Philippines has a total land area of 300,000 square kilometers, wow. which works out to be 115,831 square okay. miles. This makes it the world's largest island country. The Philippine archipelago is divided into three island groups, Luzon, Visayas, as well as Mindao. The line number... Wait, what? Mindao? Hindi naman kuya, Mindanao. Oh. There's Luzon, Visayas, at Mindanao. Ayon. Says very clearly Mindanao. No? <laughs> okay, let's go, Kuya. Well, he can be forgiven. He's a foreigner. He doesn't live in the Philippines. So, Shabaraman, he doesn't know everything, right? In groups, Luzon, Visayas, as well as Mindanao. The line number eight is Filipinos don't speak English. Oh. So when tourists visit the country of the Philippines, they're usually surprised at the fact that Filipinos, they actually learn English as their first language. Most Filipinos also huh? learn it alongside Tagalog growing up. All those. Wait a second. Kuya, please, Naman, if you want to do a fact channel, and FTD is a big fact channel, make sure you get it correct. English is not the first language that people learn in the Philippines. It's Filipino based on Tagalog. Tamaba? Please correct me if I'm wrong, huh? But that's what I know. 
Filipino is the first language that you need to learn in the Philippines. Yes, uh, English is a very important second and before people here also learn to speak Spanish. All right. So actually, I men madami kay bigan ko, magunong sila mag Spanish kasi they are a little bit older so they learn Spanish from their parents. So, diba? Especially yung mestizos, no? Okay, so I I do think there's a slight misconception here. I think people around the world knows that in the Philippines everybody can speak English. I think this is a very well-known fact. So I don't really agree with this being a misconception. Growing up, although some Filipinos will have a distinct accent while speaking English, uh, yeah. English-speaking tourists will have little or no trouble at all communicating with them. And this actually leads us to our next lie. And this lie is that Filipinos only speak Tagalog. This lie and misconception is similar to the idea that Chinese people speak Chinese, when in fact they speak a wide oh. variety of languages like Mandarin, Cantonese, etc. Yeah, in the Philippines though, Tagalog is one of many dialects spoken in the country. Yes. Back in the year 1937, the government they adopted Tagalog, elevating its status as a national language of the Philippines, also calling it Filipino. And it has since become mixed with other existing Philippine dialects, as well as foreign languages like English and Spanish. Now, what Okay, so he's partially right here. It might be that some people think that this one language spoken throughout the Philippine Islands. Of course, we also got many other dialects. Just like in most other big countries, they got dialects. No, we got Visaya, of course, Kampapangan, and dami dami naman. Now, when it comes to native languages and dialects, there are more than 200 mm. in the entire country. Correct. Number six, all Filipinos share the exact same culture. So being an archipelago, <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, historically, there was no actual Philippines to refer to. The different groups of islands being separated by large bodies of water, they contained their own distinct culture yes. and language and traditions. Yes. Because of this, they were very distinct from each other. So right. that the movement for a United Philippines didn't come until the arrival of the Spanish, which was much later on. But of course, before 1521, the Philippines was really divided into different, different places, uh, different islands, were different kingdoms, no? So he's absolutely correct about this. I also do think that after the Spaniards came here, different provinces still had their own distinct uh, cultures as well as their own distinct languages. At this point, I completely agree with Kuya. In at lie number five, we have Filipinos are nannies huh? and call center oh agents. Goodness. That's all they're good for. Okay, so Filipinos may just be very good at delivering these types of services, and because of that, there's a high demand for their skills in other countries. Oh my However, God. not everyone shares the same dream job interest. There's actually millions and millions of Filipinos living and working overseas with completely different professions, like doctors and nurses and singers. Yeah, Filipinos sing really good. That's another stereotype, but uh, I think there's like some facts to that. You'll find Filipino entrepreneurs, IT specialists, engineers, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. So no, 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 they're not just nannies and they don't just work in call centers. Okay, so another big misconception, and I think that Korea starting with all Filipinos being nannies and call center agents, it should have been all Filipinos are nurses because that's what they see in other countries, right? I mean, there are millions of nurses in the US, in Australia, and in the UK. Actually, the late Prince Philip in England said without the Filipinos, there would be no healthcare system in the UK. So, of course, this is a big misconception. But, of course, when you see uh, so many nurses, nannies maybe, that I don't know about, uh, and call center agents uh, in the Middle East, you know, in the US, and some European countries, of course, you can get the conception that everybody's working like that. But simply not true so a big misconception nanaman no we got engineers we got uh, we got of course doctors naman no we got so many professions and a lot of the OFWs are also working in these professions middle management actually i know that one of the big malls in vietnam is run by a filipino uh, the mall managers of Filipino. So lie number four is Manila is the main business district. And this is something that I thought as well, I'm not gonna lie. Contrary to what many foreigners think, most of the embassies and big firms, banks and insurance companies, they're actually located in Makati and Taguig city. Makati? 
Makati and Tagik. <laughs> I love his pronunciation. Well, you can't blame him. I mean, he's not in the Philippines. He probably hasn't been here, it seems like. And absolutely, this might be a misconception. When we said Manila, this is actually, we are thinking about the entire Metro Manila. Because it's a ibang bansa. Hindi nila alam that Metro Manila are different cities like Makati City, Taguig City, Quezon City. Uh, most people don't know this. So when they say Manila, they would think about Metro Manila. So it's a half misconception, I guess, no? Makati and Taguig are located within the greater Manila <laughs> area. Now, Manila Taguig. is the capital city of the Philippines yes. and it is one of the most populated cities but it is not yes. necessarily where all the main action happened. Of course, alam nyo, uh, Mayor Isko Moreno is the city mayor of Manila City. No? And Manila City is just part of Metro Manila. And Manila City is actually the world's densest populated city in the world. Unbelievable, just mind blowing. You know, there's a lot of reclamation projects ongoing in the city of Manila right now, like uh, Solar City and many others. And you can see the videos to all these projects right here on my channel. So please see the future of Manila City and how it become a modern city very soon. Number three, have you heard this one before? Dog meat is regularly eaten and served. What? Okay. All right. So no, they don't sell dog meat in Filipino supermarkets and grocery stores. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Eating dogs in Philippines no. is, it's a very taboo topic and uh, there actually yes are or no. a few small groups. Mostly of them are in the northern region of the yes. country in the mountain province where indigenous people as well as their ancestors have had a history of eating dog meat but you're not gonna be finding it at restaurants no. or in grocery stores no. just like that no. no that doesn't exist no. number two okay so that's really funny huh because it seems like somehow Kuya got the impression that we eat dogs in the Philippines, which is kind of true because there are places where dogs are eaten, you know that. But of course, there's not any kind of dog. I mean, they don't eat Shih Tzus or German Shepherds, right? These are special dogs. But this actually makes me really sad thinking about eating dogs in the Philippines because my security guard about 20 years ago, he actually sold his dog and it was uh, turned into some kind of food and they ate the dog which I do not understand. Uh, he was so happy with this dog, he loved it. And then all of a sudden, I was asking, where's the dog? Then they said he sold it and ludo ludo na. I don't get that. Another thing that's funny about eating dogs, he's saying, yeah, we don't see it in the supermarkets and all that, absolutely true. I have an interesting story from Vietnam because I spent so much time in Vietnam and I've actually seen dogs being sold as lechon. Yun malaki ng lechon baboy, alam nyo, no? I've seen dogs made the same way and being sold on the streets um, a little bit outside of Ho Chi Minh City and I remember passing on the motorbike and I went like what are those they look like lechon but how come the tail looks funny deba? Right? so I had to stop had to check it out looked at their mouth and everything asked them what is that a dog and yeah those were dogs just there they were making the whole street basically was making uh, lechon dogs. I couldn't believe that. That was, that was really weird. Huh? Number two, Filipinos date foreigners for money and papers. No. All right, guys. So these ideas are largely perpetuated because of shows like 90 Day Fiance. Let's be honest. Okay. I think but not that's an American show, right? Of becoming an American yeah. or British citizen or whatever. No. Some just love to travel and meet yes. people along the way. Just because Filipinos date and marry foreigners also doesn't mean that they're just looking for visa applications, making that whole process easier and everything. Filipinos, they can afford to fund their own travels yes. themselves, get their visas and do yes. their jobs in foreign countries. So they don't necessarily need a foreign <laughs> partner to do so. Correct. Marrying a Filipino actually does not mean that the foreigner has mm -hmm. to support the Filipino's family either. You know, no. there's a lot of times where people move overseas and it's like, okay, well, you gotta send money back to my family. <laughs> Not saying there's anything wrong with that, but it's unfair to label Filipinos with that stereotype. Yeah. And yes, so it is a sad reality that because they date foreigners, it's assumed that they're just gold diggers. But if you actually think about it, just because someone dates somebody from a foreign country, doesn't mean that that person is rich no. either. So That's yeah, true. something to think about there. And now, Okay, 
So that's also a big misconception, of course. I mean, yeah, of course, does some Filipinos meet foreigners and date foreigners? Yes, they do. Even in Denmark, they would date people from other countries. There's nothing wrong with that. Do some people try to get a better life and maybe thinking about going abroad? Yeah, why not? I mean, we all do that. We all want to get a better life. We all dream about something better, right? And if you somehow could find a foreign husband and move to another country and have a better life, then why not? But I don't think this is something that's really on most people's mind. I think especially now with Cebu Pacific and uh, tickets being so cheap, you know, people just like to go traveling around and when they go to other countries, you meet people from other countries and hey, you might just fall in love. Oh my God. Uh, so I think that's also definitely one of those big misconceptions. And now moving on to our biggest lie in this episode, the Philippines. It's a very dangerous country. Oh. Now, we've all seen the news reports. Many foreigners, they hear about Philippines war on drugs, among yeah. other struggles that they have in the country. And this has led foreigners to think that the Philippines is a place of criminals and kidnappers everywhere. <laughs> now, there are, of course, several unfortunate issues in the country, but overall, away from the hot spots of criminal activity, there are many beautiful places and safe places yes. that you'll see in the Philippines. Yes. Not just the resorts designed for tourists, but many local places as well, completely safe. Ayon, for sure, this is the biggest misconception of all. Philippines is a dangerous place to visit or to live. Yes and no, Deba. You see, I remember when I first came to the Philippines, I came from Thailand, I had been staying in Singapore, Malaysia, you know, all very safe places basically, you know? Then when I came to the Philippines, the very first thing I noticed was the bars on the windows. Going to the side side stores, bars everywhere. So you can't just go into a store, no? Bakimian guards a mall, some mall entrance, carbon man. I never saw that before in my life. It was also my first time to see armed guards with pump guns. Uh, at McDonald's and Pizza Hut. I couldn't believe this, I remember. I was thinking, oh my goodness, what kind of country is this? But of course, once you stay here, you, you, you know how it is here, you know. Of course, there are places that are unsafe. Kahit sa Anna, kahit sa Denmark, may places, may an ibang lugar, unsafe pa din, no? So everywhere is like that. And well, one unfortunate thing I think is that it's so easy to get guns. Everybody can basically buy a gun here and I don't agree with that, because it's a Denmark. Bawal talaga. There's no guns allowed at all for any reason whatsoever. No? So, uh, so pra safe talaga sa Denmark. We never lock our doors when we go out, you know, go shopping or something. You just close the door and you go out the door. No? Um, Kaso dito, of course, siyempa naman, you have to consider there's a lot of uh, uh, unfortunate people who might not have too much money and sometimes people get desperate and they do desperate acts. No? And of course, there's been a lot of kidnappings, especially amongst the uh, richer Chinese communities. Uh, so yes, it is more unsafe than some other countries. But I think, especially in Nayonha, especially in Nayonha, must safe talaga. Because I remember as a previous administration, it was not really very safe. I felt more and more unsafe actually. Not there was a lot of stabbings, holdovers, kidnappers, uh, rapes, and stuff like that. And Nayon, uh, after the some people might get angry with me here. But that's what I feel. No? I feel with the new administration that we have right now, I feel much more safe. I can walk outside, I can record my videos with my camera, with my cell phones, never get snatched or anything. And definitely even 3 a.m. I can walk around Binondo, Tondo, I never had a problem unlike before. Before, I don't think I would have done that. Kaso na yon, mas safe talaga. Whatever they say in the foreign news, please do not believe this. It has become a very safe place today. Ayan, sabi ko ba? This is not lies actually being told about the Philippines. This is more on misconceptions about the Philippines. So that is a very good thing. I was already getting worried. So thank you so much for watching my videos and I'll see you next time. Hey, don't forget, huh? If you like my videos, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And the most important thing is click the bell button so you get notified about new videos. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to click that subscribe button and of course the bell button so you'll be notified when we have new videos for you.